Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Um, my name is Robin Norgren. I'm the owner of Bright Child Montessori and Josie's Art School. And I am going through the lesson plan, um, and I am showing you the art lessons that you find in this lesson plan. So right now I'm working through week one in the September edition of my daily lesson plan, and you can find all the links down in the bio. And you can also look on my playlist, which I will put all of the art lessons lessons uh, into a singular playlist and that way you can find it easily whenever you need to. So anyway, the one that I'm doing today is called salt dough modeling. And what you're going to need, so I have um, some measuring cups. I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what it says that you need, but for this demonstration, I'm going to do a smaller batch of the salt dough. So what you need is you're going to need some salt. You're going to need some flour. I definitely go through a lot of this. If you, if you uh, make your own Play-Doh, go ahead and, you know, tell me so down in the comments. Um, we have water. And these are basically all that you need to make the salt dough, okay? And so in my instructions, it says you need one cup of salt, one cup of flour, and then a half a cup of water. I'm going to do a half a cup of salt, a half a cup of flour, and then a fourth of a cup of water. And then you're just supposed to mix it until pliable. So I'm going to do it in real time. So here I have my measuring cups. I'm going to go ahead and take my half a cup of flour. Put it here in my container. Put that over the side. Get my half a cup of salt. It's always nice to these. <laughs> some of these sounds are so incredibly soothing. Um, and this is something that I would let my older students prepare for the classroom. So, and even the younger students would be interested in doing that. So I would just say, just based on your classroom, you would make that decision. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a fourth of a cup of water. Okay, and I'm gonna slowly put it in, and then what you're supposed to do is start to knead it like dough. Okay. And as you can see already, it's starting to clump up. And you can add a little more water. Now you could just pour it in, and I'm sure if you let the kids do it, they might just pour it in and just, you know, take their chances. Um, so it's no big deal if that happens. So then you'll see as it starts to work together, it's a little sticky on the hands. So what you're going to do once this is all mixed up pretty well is you're going to roll these into two inch balls and you're going to put them in a container and save them for when you want to do this particular lesson. Also helps to kind of pick it up. I know it's it's pretty similar to how Play-Doh works, where it's just that warmth of your hands that really starts to help it to bind together. All right, so as you can see, it makes a pretty good amount. So this is half this. This is from the half of a batch. Right, so then just depending on the size of your classroom, you'll make more or less than what I've already created. Okay, so then I'm gonna create the balls. I have a container here. And as you can see, it really does come together fairly quickly. So this could be something you do the day before or, you know, throughout the week as you're preparing for it and something to keep the students can anticipate as they're creating it. So just from that half a batch, 
and I can make this a little bit smaller. That's enough for five students. So it does go a long way. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. And then what I would do is I would just put the lid on it and then I would just store it away for when I would like to um, work with the salt dough. Okay, so from here, then I'm going back to my lesson. And then it says, um, so then of course we have the students put on an apron and then the child removes um, a ball. So, so you can actually leave this out on the shelf um, along with, I'm gonna, I have some parchment paper that I'm gonna be working with. You do need to have this available as well. Um, you could probably also use um, a paper plate if you want to. Um, I like this just because I feel like um, it's just easier to work with and an easier place to um, allow the um, Play-Doh to sit with, or sorry, the salt dough to sit without necessarily like sticking to um, the, uh, the um, what you're having it being held on. But I think you could also do that with a, um, a paper plate and I've used paper plates in a pinch for sure. Okay, so then you, the child's gonna remove the ball and then they just work it with their hands. If it's too sticky, you're gonna sprinkle with a flour mixture. So in the instructions, it tells you, you can also have on the shelf the flour and you can put it in a salt shaker or obviously, or a pepper shaker. Um, and that way you can kind of, um, <laughs> you know that there can be times, like for example, I might do something like a bowl. You know how we always have these cute little bowls in the classroom. So you could put um, just maybe a pinch of it in there and maybe even have it so that a child can take like a spoon and they can spoon out a portion. Um, again, you know, some students can be heavy handed. That's why I wouldn't necessarily do that. So if you have a salt shaker handy, especially when they take the dough out and if they find it's a little bit sticky and it's fun to use the salt shaker and just kind of shake it on there and then that'll um, make it not stick to their hands so much. So here, um, so here's your salt dough. Here's your container with the flour if you need it. Um, and then you're just gonna have little utensils for them so they can create something with a salt dough. So you could use forks, um, you could use old paint brushes. In the instructions, it also um, suggests a toothpick. And then you're just going to create something with the tools to make an impression. And then you're gonna place it on uh, this uh, parchment paper to dry. So they could play, you know, create something with their hands. They could use the fork. Just notice what it does and how it changes the shape. And what I find is not many students will just <laughs> do that one time and be done. They are gonna tr start to create different things because it's really very enjoyable. We know, we know from um, being Montessorians, this age group really loves uh, tactile, sensorial um, experiences. And so, and it probably reminds them of something like, if they've ever made cookies at home and things like that. So I wouldn't limit the amount of time that they are creating with it. Obviously, if they start to get a bit mischievous with it, we might say, okay, we're going to need to finish up in the next few minutes. <laughs> but otherwise, um, and if they even wanted to do something like a 3D sculpture, they could do that as well. Maybe they want to create some sort of volcano. Um, I am open to that. So I know that there are maybe um, some tendencies to get very um, pragmatic about this is what we're supposed to be creating and so this is how you're going to create it. Um, I would just suggest um, that we just leave these types of things as process art and open invitations for them to really explore. So see, I like the idea of having that because again, our land and water forms, this is a great introduction to when you get to that um, section of the lesson plan, right? Because they've already been kind of doing that. 
with this salt dough modeling. So I leave that up to you. Um, any sort of parameters you'd like to look um, put on this. Of course, this might take a little bit longer to dry than your typical, maybe a heart or something else that they would like to create. Um, you could use um, cookie cutters and things like that. I prefer to use more um, um, natural materials if you can find them. Like, of course, this plastic fork isn't that natural, but you know what I'm saying. If you have anything that you have in your classroom, feathers, leaves, ste uh, stick stems, you can um, invite that to be as part of the tool making for when you're creating with this. And when they are finished, they can uh, write their name on the bottom of the, um, the parchment paper so they know that this is their creation. And then you're just going to let this dry uh, and it shouldn't take more than uh, one to two days of sitting um, and, and uh, going through the drying process. And then from there, I don't know if your school um, is going to have any sort of like um, usually like um, once a month we would have um, a gathering with our community. And so lots of the things that the students would be creating in the classroom, those would be on display either in the classroom or in some area of the classroom. So I would hold this and then this would be one of the um, projects that would be displayed when uh, the parents come for a curriculum night. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and please make sure and like and subscribe if you would like to see as I go through each one of these, um, these lessons in the lesson plan and any questions, make sure and put them down in the, uh, in the comments. All right, see you again soon.